Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome Dr. Vikram Saxena, who is the Chief Solutions Architecture for NetScout Strategy and Solutions Architecture Initiatives. He's in the CTO office at NetScout, uh, working with Tier 1 carriers and helping them uh, strategize on their next generation 5G strategies uh, as they pertain to cloud native, edge computing, etc. So welcome, Vikram. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be talking with you today. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Jennifer Clark. I'm with uh, Heavy Reading as a principal analyst, uh, specializing in the edge and cloud uh, native uh, lines of business. And uh, today we are going to be talking about cloud native, uh, the whys, the whens, the wherefores. And I'm looking forward to hearing uh, your insights, Vikram, into this transformation journey to cloud native. So yeah, let's... absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Great. So let's dive right in. Um, why is the industry going to cloud native? So you know, let's focus on our networking industry because um, you know, a few years ago, when the journey started from a hardware-centric world to a software-centric world, we used to use a term called virtualization or network function virtualization, right? And the idea at that time was to use the concept from data centers on creating virtual machines and putting network functions in virtual machines. And what we have learned over the last maybe four to five years is that although that concept has certain benefits, but there are also some significant drawbacks when it comes to networking. For a data center, I think it works, fine, but from a networking perspective, there are a lot of nuances which are different than running applications in a data center, specifically when it comes to agility, elasticity, automation, um, because things change very rapidly in the network. So, so I, I think people realize from that idea that we needed something which had more flexibility and, and more adaptability to the way the network demands keep changing. So, the advantage of cloud native, I would say, are in three specific categories compared to virtual machines. Uh, one is agility, elasticity, and automation. Um, agility is all about service innovation, being able to change things on the fly rapidly in response to customer needs and, and so on. And fundamentally, in the cloud native architecture, it's a service-oriented architecture. It's based on open APIs, it uses service discovery and things like that, which were not there in, in, in the right shape in the, in the NFE world. So what it allows operators to do is be very nimble and be very agile in reacting in near real time to customer demand. So, so that's one aspect. The second one is around elasticity, which means being able to scale up and down, you know, auto scaling, sometimes that term is used that when your network demands are constantly changing, you need to be scale up and you also need to be scaled down. Specifically in 5G, when you're talking about edge cloud, you know, small data centers at the periphery of the network, which have don't have many resources, you need to be able to scale things down. And in that model, the virtual machines can be very inefficient because of the overhead involved in each virtual machine. So the idea of using containers and microservices where you can cut things down to, small footprints to fit in the edge is extremely important. So elasticity is, is much better in a cloud native environment, especially when you're talking about a distributed architecture like 5G. The third one is around automation. You know, when you want to be able to uh, provision and scale and change things on not just a zero day, but you know, on an ongoing life cycle basis, then you need a fully automated environment to control your hundreds of edge clouds, your core clouds and, and what's happening with your control plane and user plane. So one thing with cloud native, because Kubernetes was built in from day one into the way you manage containers and microservices gave a leg up on automation. You know, everything is programmable in this world or the orchestration policy functions, they're all programmable. And so you get a lot of benefits from automation from get go in a cloud native world, which you had to overlay in a virtual machine. You know, OpenStack came and added things and Mano and a whole bunch of technologies came later, but, but it was not the same as, as building it in from day one. So I would say those are the three 
main benefits. Um, and, and one last point, in terms of 5G, I think it's even more important because when you want to do things like network scaling, control and user plane separation, cloud native and microservices work much better. Absolutely. So if with 5G, carriers are going to be multiplying the number of base stations by a factor of three or five or seven in the not too distant future, uh, the ability to be flexible, to scale effectively and to be automated, automated certainly are crucial to that. Uh, so tell me, so, so given that, why is, why is uh, cloud native important for NetScout? What is, uh, what does NetScout bring to this uh, cloud native integration. Yeah, so let's see what cloud native is first doing for the operators, and then we can talk about how we play in. You know, cloud native for operators for me is is important, but it, because it expands their addressable market. You know, they have been primarily a consumer serving company uh, from a from I'm talking from a mobile point of view, 4G and in prior generations of technology. With 5G, uh, with a broader range of frequencies now, millimeter wave, mid-band, and so on, the focus is shifting towards embracing enterprise customers, specifically you know, what the industry uses, a term called industry 4.0 applications, which is all around factory automation, um, uh, transportation services, e-health services, um, and so on. So, in this world, when you're going after uh, enterprise services and enterprise applications where, you know, a lot of these things uh, have zero tolerance for defects. Um, you know, if you're doing a remote surgery, if you are have failure in a factory, which impacts your production and delays and revenue, uh, if you have accidents on the road. So a lot of these ac uh, applications are mission critical, life critical, business critical, and they have zero tolerance for defects. So. In that sense, I think what we need to understand is the game on service, service assurance and security assurance has to be elevated. Um, the way we used to deal with service assurance in 4G was to deal with systemat, uh, systemic problems. You know, transient failures, uh, people could work around it. If you have a poor connection, you move to a better place. If you had a drop call, you would dial again and you would get through. If you have a slow download on your web page, you know, uh, you, you can move to a better coverage and you get a faster download. So humans know how to work around transient issues in the network, um, but these devices and sensors that are being connected to the network, they don't have any ability to do that. So your network has to be what I call, you know, zero defect, um, mm -hmm. or zero defect. So, you, so service assurance has to be more predictive and the actions have to be more proactive. So you can avoid defects, defects rather than reacting to defects to fix them because a few seconds of defect could have a big impact on businesses and enterprises which are being connected. So that's where I think the role of NetScout becomes very critical because we are probably the only or one of the few companies which focus on the service layer of, of, uh, of, the, you know, uh, of the network as opposed to infrastructure. There are many telemetry solutions which focus on infrastructure metrics, you know, infrastructure performance, the network element performance, uh, radio performance, you know, core performance. We focus on the service layer, which includes a control plane and the user plane. And when you're talking about both of these layers, when you're talking about, let's say, low latency applications, you need to be able to measure latency at the application layer. And if something re requires sub 10 millisecond rate latency, you're not going to get that from infrastructure telemetry. So we go directly by looking at network traffic, we, we look at those metrics directly, unable to then predict based on our sophisticated AI ML algorithms to be then able to alert or send notifications to your uh, closed loop automation platform so they can take corrective action before you see a failure impact in end customer. So, I think our role becomes elevated in 5G compared to 4G because the, the applications are more critical from the point of view of service assurance. Um, so I, I think uh, that's why we feel, you know, pretty excited about the future that's coming to us. So. Great, thank you very much for those insights. And I totally agree. As the 5G network scales uh, by many orders of magnitude as we expect it to, you cannot rely on reactive analytics. They have to be predictive in order to keep your services and the network up. So thank you very much for this discussion, uh, Dr. Vikram, and uh, we will look forward to our next conversation. 
All right. Thanks, Jennifer. Really appreciated the dialogue. So thank you so much. Thank you.